Hello, everybody. This is Frédéric Billet, and you are listening to An Hour in Billet's Head. Real people with real challenges teaching us real lessons. Hello, this is Frédéric Billet. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for clicking the download button. I am talking to you from right here in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. I am a writer. I am a host. I am a friend. I am a partner. I am an animal lover. I am a tough guy. I am a sensitive guy. I do what I want and I do it when I want it. All right, shout out to all my Facebook followers, shout out to all my Twitter followers on all five continents. Thank you. The list is growing and growing and growing, and I am so grateful to you guys. I am so grateful from people in Sri Lanka, in India, in America, in South America, in Europe, basically from everywhere in the world. I am so grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, all right, so this podcast is about entering the minds and the souls of real people with real challenges to teach us real lessons. It's a personal journal podcast. It's a live podcast. It is free. Every time you download it on iTunes, please go over there and subscribe. It is listener supported and fan supported. So the way you can do that is tell a friend, leave a review on iTunes or for more info, articles, short stories, podcasts, and the latest news, you can find me at www.frederickby.com on Twitter at ByFred or on Facebook. Simply type in my name, Frederick B. Writer. All right, last week's blogs were about the more I fail, the more I succeed, and job security versus creativity. These blogs are very, very important blogs. They're very, very important texts, very, very important articles. Check them out. If you need inspiration, motivation, entertainment, and everything in between, go now, frederickbuy.com, and subscribe. All right. This week's subject is about following your passion. Let me tell you what's going to go down. First, we're going to talk about this Wednesday's guest, J.F. Dubo. We're going to, I'm going to give you a brief overview of our interview. Then we're going to talk about the life lesson of the week concerning following our passion. You know what? You're going to love that story. I guarantee it. And lastly, we're going to do a book review, a book that changed my life a book from an Emmy award-winning musician and from the son of the wealthiest man on the planet. I loved it and I can't wait to share it with you. All right, let's begin. This Wednesday, we're going to talk to J.F. Dubo. He is a graphic designer and also the author of Life Engineered. He just published his book. You can find him at jfdubo.com and inkshares.com. It is going to be a very, very insightful interview, a very, very inspiring interview as usual. And I know you will love this interview. We're going to talk about first how he made the shift from graphic design to writer. We're going to go into his thought process as he made that shift. And he is going to give us advice for those of you who are looking to make a career change. This is your show. You're going to love it. Stay tuned. This Wednesday, 
the podcast will drop. This week, life lesson of the week. You know, I've always tried to follow my passion. I've always tried to follow my heart. Sometimes it led, sometimes, you know, it led to lonely places. Sometimes it led to great places. And now it led me here in front of you, people. Many of you know I'm a huge wrestling fan. Many of you know I am a big, uh, I am an ex wrestler. That was my passion, wrestling. And two weeks ago, a famous wrestler died, Roddy Roddy Piper. And every time there is a death in, you know, whether it's somebody that's close to you, whether it's a celebrity that you've admired uh, for, for, for years, What it does to me is that I re-question things. And I know it does that to many of you out there. Uh, when I talk to you, when I talk to my readers, my listeners, my friends, my family, you know, death shakes us. And every time somebody dies, I re-question my life. I re-question my life's meaning. I re-question my, you know. And when this guy died, you know, he was a pretty famous guy. And... His life is basically, he lived his life in front of us, you know, in the ring, in front of the camera. And boom, just like that, you know, you, 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 you perceive someone as a hero. You perceive someone as you know, a, a great star, a great individual, a great person, somebody who achieved a lot in life. And then boom, overnight, they're gone, cardiac arrest, you know, back to where you came from. And... I remember an interview he gave months ago on the Steve Austin show. And he, he simply said, you know, for all you wrestlers out there, wrestle from the heart. And I, I took it and, I, you know, it, it stayed with me. It stuck with me. And I've made the decision a long time ago to live from my heart. And I think that's one thing that many of us here should learn and and that's what it did to me you know follow there's nothing else in the world more important than finding out why you were born to be on this earth you know it's like steve harvey said the two greatest moments of his life were one when he was born and two when he found out why he was born um so when roddy piper died it just It brought me back to the source. It brought me back to the why I'm doing what I'm doing. And it brought me back to, you know what? This time on this earth is so short. There is nothing more important than following my passion, which is an equivalent of saying, follow my heart. I want to hear your comments. I want to hear what you have to say. I want to hear... Go on my page, go on my website, fredekbuy.com, and I want to know what you think. Uh, I think it's worth, you know, Roddy Piper had a, had a hard life. He started wrestling when he was 15. Uh, he came fifth in the world, uh, uh, you know, on the bagpipes, and he had, you know, he had no family, and he built a life, and he did wrestling, and he was successful at it. And when you talk to him, when you listen to his podcast, He always did it. He always felt true. It always seems like he spoke from the heart. So, Roddy Piper, thanks for your for for your 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 teaching. You know, your her, his life is such a an example for me. It's an inspiration for me that life on this earth is so short. People live from the heart. Follow your gut. Follow your passion. Next, the book review. This is the main subject of this show. It's a book that, like I said earlier, it changed my life. It changed how it reinforced my belief in what I was convinced of. The title of the book is Life is What You Make It. Find Your Own Path to Fulfillment by Peter Buffett. That's right. You heard the name Peter Buffett. He's an Emmy Award winning musician and the son 
of the wealthiest men on earth, Warren Buffett. It's a very small book. It's a non-fiction book. It's a self-help book about personal transformation. The publisher is Crown Archetype, and it was published in 2010. Let's go over it. You know, to give you a brief overview of, uh, of what it's all about, contrary to what people might think, it is not a book on financial advice or telling us how to become wealthy. The main theme is spiritual development. And this is why I picked this book for this show for this week about following our passion, because that's all he talks about. For anybody out there who is looking for his passion or for her passion, this book is for you. He basically gives us a glimpse of his childhood with his family. You know, you'll be surprised to know that they didn't live in a wealthy home when he was young. He gives us a glimpse of his dad's work ethic. He goes into his thought process as he had to make a decision about his career. And he describes, you know, how others thought he was so normal as Warren Buffett's son. And he also gives us a picture of his growth as a musician and as a man. You know, it's not a book. It's not a, it's an autobiographical book. You know, it's a book about his life. Yes, but it's not a book that, you know, we don't go into deep, deep details about every single detail about his, his childhood. He really shares his experiences here. Um, he also provides, and I just thought that was interesting because we have an, a perception of how wealthy people live and what their life is like. And according to this book, it is not what we think it is, you know. And so he, he provides us a picture of the environment of his fellow wealthy acquaintances, uh, you know, which, like I said, which, which surprised me. And it's definitely not what you might think. You know, the first reaction I had when I when I read that book, Life is What You Make It, uh, Find Your Own Fulfillment. It was, it enlightened me. It confirmed so many of my personal convictions about the meaning of life, the meaning of my life. Um, I was inspired. It is an inspiring piece. And it was written so simply and naturally. Uh, I mean, I throughout the book, I'm a guy who underlines everything. I have my, you know, I have my pen and I under, and man, I think I underlined pretty much the whole book. I mean, I had so many ha-has that it just, it, you know, it really touched me. It really, really touched me. It touched my heart. It touched, it touched my soul, you know, and, um, let me tell you why I love it so much. Let me tell you why you should go to your library. You should go on Amazon. You should go on Peter Buffett's website to pick up that book. Every parent should read for a better education for their children. So many of us are taught that school is the best thing for everyone. And this relates to my last week's blog, ladies and gentlemen. Job security versus creativity. Um, you know, and I love how he describes that everyone has and should follow their own path to fulfillment, as the title mentioned. None of the Buffett children work in a financial industry today. Uh, you know, his sister is a stay-at-home mother. He's a musician. And he goes into details about his other siblings. Um and he mentions how, you know, their dad always advised them to do what they love instead of doing what they think will give them the greatest income. That's one other thing that oftentimes we, you know, a perception we have about wealthy people is that they are all about money. You know, they are all about the almighty dollar. And what I, what I, you know, the perception, the perception I had was 
the entire Buffett family are very, very simple people. They're people like you. They're people like me. They're people who simply did what, what you know, what they loved, and and because of that, they 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 were lucky. Um, you know, he mentions how growing up, he had, you know, he would notice his dad, who after working for hours upstairs, reviewing financial statement, he'd what he would walk back down the stairs like a Zen master, you know, he was as Zen as someone could be. And, 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 you know, Peter mentions that the reason he was able to, you know, the reason why he was never like, why he was not stressed out is because he did what he did for the love and the challenge of it. And, um, you know, another thing I related to is that he mentions how his dad is spiritual. And, you know, th that was one of the, my, of my biggest haha. -ha, and that was one of the, my favorite parts of the book. I can, you know, he had many types of spiritual books in his library from all spiritual traditions. And he especially mentions, you know, the East traditions like Taoism and Buddhism and all of that. You know, Warren seems to be, a big uh, fan of that, actually, you know, and I am a fan of, of that. And I know that if you're listening to this show, you are too. I know that this type of thinking relates to you, you know, as much as it relates to me. Another thing that I loved about this book is that Peter's passion for music uh, comes through in this piece. I love how in this book, he doesn't emphasize on making money, but rather seeking personal fulfillment. He doesn't hit us over the head with endless advice. You know, I think I've had my share of self-help books uh, right now. You know, sometimes I feel saturated by them. There are so many out there that just all, you know, all telling us what to do, how to live, you know, how to, to you know, do it this way, do it this way, do it this way. But, you know, here, Peter really doesn't do that. And I think initially, you might think that someone like Peter would do that. But uh, really, he, he doesn't. He only shares simply and naturally his life's experience. And by no means did I ever feel that he was trying to preach to me. And that's very important to me. You know, I don't want to be preached to. The issues that the, the book raised, you know, it's, uh, well, like I said, finding your own path despite the world's expectations of you, uh, you know, the difference between working for love instead of working for money and the problems with some children born in wealthy families. Another thing that, that really, you know, another part of the book that really, I really loved and I really was, you know, another haha. It really was... He gives us a, an honest picture here. The negative, you know, I can I can only speak as a fan. The negative, I have to tell you, I didn't find any. I try, I thought over it. I I I couldn't find a negative thing to say about that book. That's crazy, you know. Um, so people, overall, it's a must read. Go pick it up right now for every parent who want to better themselves as parent for any children, for any child who want to better themselves as individuals. Peter came across as someone so simple, down to earth, and nothing like the glamorous people we see on television. He came across as humble, and I thought about how so many of us should learn from him. Uh, I loved the honesty he showed about himself, about his environment, and about his insecurities growing up. Very few people, especially men, allow ourselves, you know, very few people allow themselves to expose our insecurities. And, um, you know, finally the impact that uh, the book had on me, I should find out what I love and go from there. It felt... Great hearing it, hearing it.
from the horse's mouth. I still carry this book with me. And I mean, I think about it all the time. And this is, this is the reason why I want to share it with you. Anytime I'm passionate about something, I feel like sharing it. I want to share it to people because I really think that this can help people. Um, whenever I need to remember something, I go back to that book. And it's definitely something that I keep in my library. It's like a sacred book. It's like a little, you know, I don't want to say a little Bible, but it's a little referral book, you know. And, uh, and, and it's a referral from someone who lived it. And these are the most valuable things in life. All right. This is it for today. This Wednesday, JF Dubo, graphic designer and the author of Life Engineered. The subject, following our passion. This is this week's subject. Don't miss out. I want to see you. I want to see you Wednesday and Most importantly, I want to hear from you and share it with the world. I want to read your comments on the air. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. See you Wednesday. That's all for today. Thank you for listening, and I hope you found it helpful. If you want to listen to more episodes, you can visit frederickbay.com slash podcast. If you'd like to connect, you can also tweet me at by Fred, or you can find me on Facebook at Frederick by Writer. And remember, live with purpose, passion, and love. <laughs>